Hi there, my folks who are in the right berries moon. This is Carrie Mubarak and Wooing Nature Life giving you your reading for July. So if you were born under the right berries moon, which means that you were born from 723 to 822, I'm talking about you and you know who you are, my Leo friends. So I'm going to do three readings today. I'm going to do the medicine wheel reading. I'm going to start with that just so we can get a general sense of what's going on. And then I'm going to go to the world spirit tarot. We're going to do a tarot reading. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is Alana Fairchild. I'm going to do a sacred rebels card for you so we can kind of round everything out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. For your center card, which is about you, Leo, people out there, Leo, I'm going to pull a, a, uh, an animal card for that center card, just so we can know what kind of energy you're moving with at this time, or things that you want to think about, or ways that you want to adopt, stuff like that. So we got the grasshopper spirit going here, and um, of course we know that gr what grasshoppers do, they take leaps. They jump from one thing to another. They jump from one thing to the next thing, right? So depending on where you are right now, Leo, you may be hopping from thing to thing, or you may be getting ready to take a big leap. So you know where you are. You know where that sits with you. I am seeing this being a crown position. So the crown chakra is what you want to think about. This is a higher level leaping that we're talking about, not just going from thing to thing, but going up, ascension. So that's what we're thinking about there. And ascension processes are happening for everyone right now. Um, depending on, you know, what your choices are, your, your deeper choices. So it says to take a leap of faith. Um, grasshoppers are also symbols of good luck. So whatever it is that you are endeavoring or whatever leap you're planning on taking, just know inherently and in yourself that everything is going to be all right, that your faith is going to guide you to the exact right place and you will land exactly where you need to Leo. All right. So I am working with the mystical shaman deck for the rest of the medicine wheel. So I will be pulling four cards, one for the south, one for the west, one for the north, and one for the east in that order. And that will give us an idea of what's happening in July in general and where your energies are. It'll also give us other totems to work with and that kind of thing. So in the south, in the south position, which is the place of childhood, it's the place of growth. Um, it's also the place where you can go back to your inner child, which is before, you know, you got tainted and indoctrinated and people started telling you not to be who you are that's where you go when you are really absorbing and getting information and um, and being like a sponge. You know how they say children are, are like sponges? They are. And so this is where you are in your um, life right now and where you can be like a sponge or where you are learning new things. And that card in that position is the gatherer card. Um, so you are gathering information right now, Leo. You are learning a lot and that information is coming to help you connect and attach to a spirit place, but it's also a place of spiritual abundance. So um, pay attention. Um, you're going to have to put your wild side on a little bit. You're going to have to ruffle up the mane and, you know, go out there and be, um, you know, a little more open than you, than you may have been before, but the benefits are going to be, um, magnanimous. Again, I'm getting the crown. Um, so crown chakra work is what we're talking about. If you need to do some work around your sh crown chakra, do a crown shock, a crown chakra healing or a crown chakra balancing. Um, that would be, definitely in um in order for the month of July um and I'm getting that that's where the information is coming from so you're going to be getting lots of downloads during that time um and then also some creative ideas are going to be coming to you as well okay 
for those of you who are connecting or who are connected to the um, Yoruba or to Santeria, Lukumi, um, Candomblé, you'll want to do things with, or you might want to do rituals with Yemaya with the water, um, because I am getting the pumpkins here. So maybe offerings that you need to make um, to those Orishas. Yes, yes. Yes, I'm getting a definite yes because they are looking out for you and they need for you to um to make sure that you're giving your um your alms, your thanks, your appreciation to those particular um spirits that you are working with. And I'm getting that that's water. Now, if you are not if that's not your if those um Traditions are not your tradition, but you do have traditions that are associated with water. You'll want to do work around water, okay? We try to make sure everybody gets counted. Nobody's left out here. All right, so in the West, which is the looks within place, that's where you go to look within, to look into yourself, your own being. You also um, go there when you want to study your own personal past and then also the past of your people, so your ancestral connections, are made through there, but it's associated with the past. Um, it's also associated with um, gaining understanding from your experiences. And it's also where you go to connect to your subconscious and to your dream space. So in that place, you have the ghost dance happening. So the ghost dance is, you know, connecting to your ancestor spirits. It's about also, it's also about connecting. It's also about releasing, um, releasing, um, old karmic dead and releasing past pain and trauma and forgiving forgiveness. Um, it's a powerful ceremony, the ghost dance. And those who are connected to ghost dancing, you know who you are. It may be time for one. And for those of you who are not from those traditions, then it will simply be about connecting to your ancestors and allowing your ancestors to help you release old karmic debt or release some old, um, some old debt. It's old debt. It could be um, actual physical debt, like money debt, but it can also be associated with mental debt and emotional debt, um, relationship debt, you know, things that you feel like you owe. Maybe you feel like you owe somebody an apology, or maybe you feel like you owe people money, or maybe you feel like somebody owes you. Um, but it's time to let go of all of that because that's what's dragging you. That's It can drag you when you're um, ruminating around that. So that's what this is about. I highly recommend dance meditation or anything dance related for you. Um, this is associated with the number 22 and that's a power number. You can look at that or look that up on Google or whatever and, and um, get whatever you need to get from that. But 22 is... Um, it's when you are taking your um, spiritual teachings to another level, to the next level. It's the next level up of spiritual attainment or understanding. And it leads to different foundations or a spiritual foundation. Um, but yeah, you're being called to do that. It may happen in your dreams. All right, so moving right along to the north position. The north is your place of wisdom. We associate this with the wisdom phase of life when you're in your eldership. So if you're not an elder, then you this is where wisdom is coming from, or where you can, um, or or the or something that's connecting you to the wisdom. And you have the owl here. The owl is the symbol of wisdom. So you have the knowledge and you are gaining the knowledge now that is going to allow you to be in the position of the owl later. And it's suitable for you because Leo, you all are also associated with leadership and power itself. And so this is spiritual power. This is, um, 
knowledge of different realms. It's knowledge of the shadow. It's also knowledge of, um, or being able to see, having the wisdom to see. The whole thing about the owl is that it can almost turn its head, you know, completely backwards and see all around it. So being circumspect. Um, and that is also a part of this process. So yeah, you are taking some leaps. You're taking some spiritual leaps. And then you're also gaining your spiritual wisdom here. I'm still seeing the crown. I'm seeing a crown. Actually, I'm seeing right here. It's between your third eye and your crown chakra, but there's there's um, there's more. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. All right, so in the place of new beginnings, um, the east place, we've got the heart of the sky. So they want you to make some sky connections. That's the next phase for you. Leo, you may be studying astrology or you may be studying the stars or you may just be going outside in the night to be with the stars, whatever leads you, however how that moves you, that's the way to go. And so um, that may be the next level of information that you are gathering to. Um, there may be some wisdom there for you in that place, but you have to go to the Sky Nations. The Sky Nations are um, giving you messages. I'm getting your moon, connecting to the moon. So moon readings would be really good for you in July if you want to schedule those. I'm getting that, that I'm getting this part of your head. Again, it's right here. I don't know. Somebody may know what that means, but I'm getting right here. Uh, so there may be an awakening or there may be a connection between your third eye, of course, and your crown chakra. It may be that they're trying to open up that area for you. I don't know. Um, as you meditate on that, it may come to you. But yes, you are making connections to the sky nations. Okay. Astrology, astronomy, just spending time out in the night sky, getting connected to your moon, your moon um, phases doing things according to the moon phases or the phases of the moon, starting to move in connection with that. Um, and when you do that, it's going to, it's going to awaken certain, um, it's going to awaken this right here. That's what it is. Whatever that is, <laughs> it's going to awaken it. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving right along. I'm going to the world spirit tarot we're just doing a general tarot reading for my leo people just a general reading just see what leo needs to know for the month of july we'll be aware of this is where we get a little deeper into the personals all right, so again, I'm seeing a spiritual trajectory. I'm seeing that connection with the star nations. The heart of the sky is coming back again. It's a continuation of the conversation from the medicine wheel. So they want you to pay attention to the, yeah, they want you to pay attention to the movement of the stars. Um, they also want you to pay attention to any kind of planetary changes or any kind of planetary activity, including the movement of the moon. That's in there too. Oh, wow. They're just coming out of the, out of everywhere. Um, this also reminded me about your connection with the water. That's important for you to connect to water. During the month of July, water in the moon. So you might, if you're living near the shore or near, living near a beach, go to the shore during the changes of the moon. So like the first quarter moon or the half moon or the, if you can do all of those, great. If not, you know, don't stress yourself. But full moon, new moon, spend time at the ocean if you can get near the ocean because that's bringing it all together. That's getting the sky nations and the water together. Mm. Mm, that's wow. That's, that's a wow. <laughs> that's a lot of wow. I like it. I do. I like it. I like it. That's some good stuff. All right. So doing that is going to put you in the Sybil of Pentacles space. Sybil of Pentacles is associated with the Queen of Pentacles. This is like you sitting back, looking at your garden growing, looking at the thoughts, the ideas that you've come up with, watching them sprout up. 
It's also making connections to your higher spiritual plane, your higher spiritual connection. This is when things begin to balance out for you and seem like it's everything is right again. But it's also telling you to don't rely so much on what you normally relied on. You're going to have to kind of put the blinders on and go through your process. That process is going to awaken a whole nother level to you. That's this right here. It's going to awaken a whole nother level of thinking, being, and processing. Like your mental processes are going to change. It's going to be electrified. It's going to, it's going to pick up. And it's also going to help balance out your energy. Yeah. So I'm getting here for you to, um, this is that gatherer again. This is seeker of wands. So you're gathering information about the spirit realm. This is going to be something that you enjoy doing. This is how you're going to learn how to let the spiritual power move you and take you as opposed to you trying to do it. You're trying to force it. You're going to let it happen naturally and it's going to happen naturally for you once you connect to that star plane. All right, so I got some changes happening, but before that, we've got the five of cups here. This is interesting because this doesn't look like it's in line with what I'm getting from spirit. It looks like maybe, you know, you're not feeling on top, you know, like you feel like you're separated from that or you're feeling distraught about something, Leo. Uh, it could be a relationship. Mm. <laughs> it could be a relationship. I'm getting that you're distraught about a relationship. And what I see is a donkey on the heel. Leave the donkey on the heel and keep it moving. Whenever I see that card, I'm like, leave the donkey on the heel. See, we got lovers in relationship with that. So if you're, if you're in a relationship with somebody and you are tied or connected to somebody and this is how you feel right here, it's time for you to lead the donkey on the hill and keep it moving because what you don't want to do is go back up the hill and stress your strain, your legs and tire your body out already more tired than you already are so that you can go up here. Cause when you go up here, it's still a donkey. It may look like, you know, it's sunshiny up there, but you know, this, you know, this, okay. So this is related to a love relationship here. And then right after that, we got the devil. So you cannot let a love relationship sabotage your life situation because you got good things coming to you, Leo. You got good things coming to you. You know, there's some some very um, powerful, high highly powerful spiritual lessons coming towards you and you don't want this right here and you this right here to get in the way of it you can either operate like this or you can operate like this or you can operate like this with some hope in the future or you can operate like this where you chilling and letting the spiritual power move you to the next level or you can be with this you got to think about that. So change is necessary. Wheel of fortune. <laughs> Wheel of fortune, starting to look at the changes that you need to make in your life. This is personal, not relationship. -a -la -la -la, because the relationship stuff is not going to be what you want it to be until the personal is. So that's why you're gaining your spiritual power. Because the next person that you got to deal with is going to have to be able to meet you at that level because you're already going to that level. You're already headed there. It's already in the cards. So if you need to let go of something that has you feeling like this, do it. Because why do you want to feel like that? You don't want to feel like that. You don't. So we got Sage of Cups here. To me, that's the next level. That's when you're... That's 
you operating at another level of um of um that's you being able to take command of the love situation okay being in control or in command of your own love practice how you practice love in your life mm. it's a different love practice you know because sometimes we associate love you know we we attach to love and see this this devil card also represents attachments too you know these are the kind of attachments that leave you feeling like this, drained out. It's negative. It's, it's an attachment. And so you're learning about that through the relationship itself, but you got to turn around and look at you, look at how you are feeling in that situation. So you may be distraught because the relationship isn't going well, but the bottom line is you're distraught. <laughs> the relationship is making you distraught. So, um, Sometimes I was saying before, sometimes what happens is we're accustomed to that kind of love making, right? And that is not benefiting and not beneficial. So we have to rethink or repattern your thinking around love. And what this is saying is adopting a new love practice. That's some powerful juju right here. I'm going to save this card so I can take a picture of it because that's good information for everybody on the relationship tip. So what I'm seeing here, and I'm not going to continue to uh, go any further with it because what I'm seeing is, is that it's time for you to really turn into your spiritual um, oneness. It's time for you to get in. It's time for you to um, get in and own this part of yourself, own this from the inside. The Sybil of Pentacles is also associated with the Empress card, um, and the Empress is about abundance. So it's in, it's internal. It's the internal wealth that you need to see in yourself. And when you see the internal wealth, then you, you're going to be like, I don't need a donkey on the hill because I need a Maserati on the street. Do you understand? There you go. All right. So one more card, and that's going to come from the Sacred Rebels. Sacred Rebels. I love Sacred Rebels. I always get a good a good message. So this is just going to be the last message for you, Leo, for the day. Oh, it's already here. <laughs> that was quick, Leo. Y'all's energy is popping. Okay. It says, beyond the mind, the heart beats. Beyond the mind, the heart beats. And when I look at this card... I see the galaxy right off the bat. There we go with those star nations again. I see the blue eggs growing. Oh, you got blue eggs. Blue eggs means um, like spiritual birth and spiritual rebirth. There's birthing that's happening in the spirit for you, in your spirit. It's connected to your DNA, which means that it is connected to your ancestral lines. So your ancestral lines and connecting to your ancestral lines is going to be very important for you in the month of July and from here on out. But it's going to start in July for some of you. For some of you that are already connected ancestrally, then you'll want to make some real, um, some some special efforts to connect to your ancestors during that time. Um, I'm seeing also in this that the fall, looking forward to the fall. So there's going to be some... Um, um, some breakthroughs that are going to happen in the fall for you, Leo. So when we get to the September, October, November readings, um, we should see some changes there. We should see some of that blossoming happening for you. Um, mm, yeah, you're going to be getting to, um, to some, you're going to be getting to the bare bones. You're going to be going back. You're going to be going back to some roots and to some, some of your roots, just your roots. That's all you need to know about that. All right. So this card is the 21, which is associated with the number three numerologically. Numerologically, three is about creation. And we got those three blue eggs growing up there or uh, incubating. All right. So let's see what the, pa the passage has to say. It says, in the chaos of modern life and the constant fluctuations of our minds, 
it can be difficult to remember that a sublime sanctuary lies within. Yet it is always there beneath the ceaseless activity, beneath the ceaseless activity, there is an endless vast spaciousness that restores and connects us to something greater, something that exists outside of time. Some might call it eternity. Within that sanctuary, sacred sound is felt rather than heard. The sacred sound is actually the reverberating heartbeat of the entire universe. Your own heart's rhythm sounds within the greater universal heartbeat. The totality of life, all of your being, can be felt as one through listening to and feeling for the sacred sound of the heart beating within you. It is through this heartbeat that we experience a love that is more than preference or attachment. This is the love that inspires, energizes, and moves us to create even beyond what we once thought was possible. Your love for life, the need to feel alive and express yourself, and the quest for that which is truly fulfilling. These are the sacred urges that rebel against fear and promote passion for being alive. They flow through your blood and can be felt through the beating of your heart. This oracle has a message for you. There is a way of the mind which can make mountains out of molehills, even when it thinks it's turning mountains into molehills. Then there is the way of the heart. It is the subterranean and moves subtly beneath possible obstacles, intelligently shifting with exquisite sensitivity, sensing the way forward through dangerous pathways and responding to what is before it even occurs in the physical realm. However, with the heart's intelligence, we cannot see and know in the same way that we do when we allow the mind to direct us. We have to be open to another way if we want to benefit from the innate intelligence of the heart, which to me is about connecting to your intuitive space. The mind sees, plans, and strategizes. The heart feels, responds, senses, and intuits. See? When we walk the path of the heart, we must feel and respond rather than plan our way. It is a different way to live and create. It's a, it is closer to the earth and to the source of life itself. It is not for those who are lacking in courage and trust, but you are not one of those people. No, you are not, Leo. You are being asked to trust your heart and, drop, and to drop into it. The mind is important, but it cannot supplant the heart. The role of the mind is to serve the truths of the heart, that is, to create the spacious chamber of receptiveness into which the sacred rhythm of your heartbeat can resound. That is powerful. Connecting to the heart space, the heart space is the intuitive space, and then you use your mind to create or to manifest what your intuitive space has revealed. So that's a great message for July. I hope you have a great July and I hope you're having a wonderful life.